This video will discuss matrices in linear algebra. Okay, so a matrix we can just define as a two-dimensional rectangular array of values. So we might represent this by some capital letter A, sometimes with two underlines beneath it. Two underlines indicating it would be a rank two tensor, so it has kind of two dimensions worth of values here. So that could also be indicated by a kind of bold face letter A. And that's equal to a bunch of elements here. So each of these elements I, is just some, uh, in general, complex number. More typically, it's going to be just any real number. But we would indicate that by two subscripts inside the array, where the first subscript is the row we're in, 1, 2, all the way down to row M. And then the second subscript is the column we're in, column one, two, all the way to column N. So in general, some matrix will have M rows, N columns, and it'll have N times M total number of elements. So A M sub N is element is the element in row M and column N. All right, so what can we do with matrices? Well, we can add matrices together if they have the same number of columns and the same number of rows. So in that case, if the sum of two matrices, element ij in A plus B, would just be little aij plus little bij. So in matrix addition, you just add the elements together uh, one by one. So element 1, 1 is A11 1, 1 plus B11, 1, 1. element 2, 1, A21 1 plus B21, etc., out to the edge of the entire matrix. All right, then just like with vectors, we can also multiply them by some scalar value alpha. So any individual element inside alpha times A is just alpha times that element. So alpha times A is going to be element 1, 1 is alpha A11, element 2, 1, alpha A21, element 1, 2, alpha A12, etc., until we've filled out the entire array. All right, we can also multiply matrices times column vectors. So if I want to multiply a matrix times a column vector, for example, A, matrix A times vector B, Notice two underlines for the two-dimensional matrix, one underline for the one-dimensional vector. The elements of the resulting vector are going to be a sum over from j equals 1 to the number of columns of A of Aij times B sub j. So in order for this to work out, we have to have some conditions that we can meet. So we have to have that the number of columns of matrix A is equal to the number of rows or the number of elements of vector B. So if that's true, if we have the same number of elements here as we have here, then we can multiply these matrices, uh, this matrix and vector together. If not, then they would be said to be incompatible. We can't multiply them. All right, and then <clears throat> in the resulting vector, the number of elements in the resulting vector is going to be equal to the number of rows we have in the initial matrix. All right, so for each element in the final matrix in the final vector C, we have multiply uh, the element A sub I J times the element B sub J, and then keep summing as you go down the row of the matrix and the column of the vector. All right, so then lastly, on this video, we have matrix multiplication, where we are taking individual rows of matrix 1, matrix A, times individual columns of matrix B to get an element in the final matrix C. So similarly here, we have to have that the number of columns in matrix A is equal to the number of rows in matrix B. Otherwise, these matrices are incompatible and we can't multiply them together in this way. All right, so the elements in A times B are going to be a sum from K equals 1 to the number of columns in matrix A. And that's going to be A sub IK times B sub KJ. 
So once again, multiply, going down the row of A and the column of B, multiplying those values together and adding them up as we go, giving us a single element in the resulting matrix C. So that's the basic introduction to matrix properties and the types of things we can do with matrices.